make sure everyone has access to health care services. Pedestrian concern. Uh, any idea what these plans are going to cost? Um, the, let me let me give you. Here's one thing you can do. I, I, I should have mentioned our website. You can go. We've developed a new website in, at our department. It's called InsureKS.org. There it is. Um, you can go to that website. We have an estimator on the website. You can enter a county. You can enter a uh, family status, you can enter income, and it will feed back to you. So I, I'll give you one that, I, that um, we've, we've just played with in the department. A, uh, a couple in Washington County that makes $38,000 a year. The husband's 30, the wife is 28. They have two small children. Their premium before the tax credit would be about a little over $600 a month. After the tax credit, it's 145. So significant savings. Um, so you and, and everybody, it's hard to give an across the board because you've got four categories: the bronze, the silver, the gold, and the platinum level to choose from. And your family status is going to affect the the, uh, the cost. But the the across the country, the dire predictions about the premiums being um, very unaffordable, I think, are proving. Uh, not to be the case as as the um, companies file their uh, products. Eight, because we're a federal exchange state, we won't we won't none of our the premiums won't be posted for Kansas until HHS posts them, and that's October one. But you don't have to buy right away. So I, I re we really encourage people to if they're interested in buying insurance, go to the website. Um, Use one of the navigators or use a, an agent and just see what, what the benefit might be. Good question. And everybody does need to understand what their potential cost would be. Yes? So my question is, if, since we have already a deficit in our national treasury budget, how are they going to pay all these tax credits that are supposed to reduce our premium? Well, um, the Congressional Budget Office scored the program. One of the things they're doing is bringing, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the premium is the messenger that health care costs are going up. One of the provisions in the law is the creation of accountable care organizations, which moves health care delivery away from fee-for-service and towards a value based system. Instead of doing more to get paid more volume, it, it, it rewards health plans for appropriate utilization of services. And when you, so that's, that's one category. Um, Medicare is, uh, the changes are being made to the companies that provide Medicare. There's no change in benefits for Medicare. In fact, the, the benefits for Medicare recipients have been enhanced. The donut hole, the so-called donut hole for prescription drug coverage, will close by 2020. Uh, primary care, one um, annual um, health care, primary care visit um, is, has been added, and a, and a number of other co-pays and deductible changes uh, that enhance the Medicare program. But when Medicare Advantage plans were first created, they, uh, they were being, uh, they thought, they wanted, they wanted private insurance companies to do this, to do these Medicare Advantage plans, and they enhanced their reimbursement 14% uh, above traditional Medicare, 14%, and they've done quite well. And um, so, one of the savings is going to be to reduce that ex that 14% expenditure down. I don't know what the what the where the percentage ends up, but they're still going to get some enhancement. But um, and then overall, just um, cost savings over the course of the 10 years that the Congressional Budget Office um, scored it. So, um, you know, I'm not a I'm not an accountant. Uh, there may be some smoke and mirrors there that I I couldn't explain to you, even if I thought that even if I knew they were there. But uh, they say it's going to pay for itself, and if it and I think it won't. If if if, if it does, if it pays for itself. It's going to be through better health care delivery and getting people 
um, keep it, you know, the best, the most cost effective uh, way to keep healthcare costs under control is to keep people healthy, to find ways to prevent chronic conditions and getting people the health care they need at the appropriate time. So, you know, there are a lot of very hard to measure um, aspects to it that um, I, you know, if, if not this, what? I'm not sure if we'd be able to control health care costs any better if we had a, a, um, a national top-down uh, one-size-fits-all system. I, I don't have faith that that would work either. And I, I just, I personally, uh, for me, it's, it's a moral obligation that as a country, we need to make sure that everyone has access to appropriate health care services. Early, not later, not in an emergency room, and getting, uh, getting the health care we need and the ability to pay for it. This may not be perfect, but at least it's a step in that direction.